It was you, wasn't it? It was you that requested this problem. All right. We'll get it. We'll get it. Because otherwise, then I have to go find another problem to do, and that might take all day. So we're going to get this problem. All right? We're not just going to skip it. All right. So we tried my first favorite trick, which is just to make the problem simple and look for a pattern, but four, eight, nine. Eh, there's not going to be much of a pattern there. Um, let's look at, I mean, try to organize the information a little bit of a different way. How might we do that here? Well, if we look at the numbers we're leaving out, well, let's think about why we have to leave these particular numbers out. And maybe kind of group the numbers. Like, we can't put the 4 in because of the 1. Can't put the 9 in because of the 1. In fact, we can't put the 9 and the 4 in together either. Like, if we left the 1 out, we could put the 4 in, but we couldn't also put the 9 in because 4 times 9 is 36, which is a perfect square. So let's just go ahead and group those. We can't put any any two of these in. We can only we can only take one of these. And let's see, we have to we can group the eight with the two, because the reason we couldn't put the eight in is two times eight. That's a perfect square. And five, six, and seven were okay. Now let's look at this and see if we see anything interesting here. One, four, nine. These are perfect squares. So we can't put any two perfect squares in and, and that makes sense. Now if we started with one perfect square, and we added another perfect square, x squared times y squared, we'll get x squared y squared, which is just xy squared. So if I take two perfect squares and put them in, I'm going to get a product that's a perfect square. And we can't have that. So I can only take, I can only take one of the perfect squares. And when we include one perfect square, the only numbers that we then need to exclude are the other perfect squares. So if I started with just one perfect square, I stick in one of these squares, the only way I can add another number to make the product be a perfect square is if this is also a perfect square. Now, if I put something in here that's not a perfect square, like say 2, then my product would be 2x squared. 2x squared can't possibly be a perfect square. If you take the square root of that, if you take the square root of 2x squared, you're going to get x times the square root of 2. And if x is an integer, well, this can't be a perfect square. So I know that I can only put in one perfect square. I can only put in one perfect square. And once I put in one, I have to exclude all the other perfect squares. But the rest of the numbers, it looks like they'll be OK. Well, let's look at this, this next column. What are these numbers? Well, each one is, is double a number. In, in the column of the squares. So each of these is two times a perfect square. And again, this makes sense. If I take one number that's double a perfect square, and I multiply it by another number that's double a perfect square, two times y squared, these twos will pair up. I'll have two times two is two squared, then x squared and y squared. And that's just two times x times y squared. So that's a perfect square. So I can't include two numbers, each of which is double a perfect square. And just like we did with the squares here, that means I can take only one number that's double a perfect square. I can't take two or I'll get a perfect square. But I can pair up any one of these numbers with anything else up here. Like if I have double a perfect square and I multiply it by three times a perfect square, so I have 2x squared times 3y squared, I'm going to get 6x squared y squared. 6x squared y squared can never be a perfect square when x and y are integers. These are both perfect squares. In order for this whole thing to be a perfect square, 6 would have to be a perfect square, but, but it's not. And that's a good thing for us. So now I think we have a plan here. We have all the perfect squares in a column here. And that means when we go get rid of 9, and go for the general problem, the original problem, which is 1 through 16. Well, I know that 16, 16 is also a perfect square. So I can't put 16 in if I've put in 1 of 1, 4, and 9. So I'm going to put that with the squares over here. 2 and 8, the next, the next number that's double a perfect square is 18. We don't have any 18s, fortunately. So I'm going to go to 3. 3 times 4 is 12. We can't have the 3 and the 12. We can have either one of them. Can't have them both. 5, we can't have 5, and 5 times another perfect square, which would be, say, 5 times 4 is 20. No 20s over there. 
And similarly, there are no more numbers that are 5 times a perfect square, no more numbers that are 6 times a perfect square, and so on with 7. So the rest of these numbers, we can include all of them. We can include every single one of these numbers all the way out here, because none of these fits in one of these columns over here. So Jillian can draw one of the perfect squares, one of the numbers is 2 times a perfect square, one of the numbers is 3 times a perfect square, and then all of the rest of these. So she can take out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. She can pull out 11 numbers. Can she pull out 12? How can we be absolutely certain that she can't pull out 12 numbers? Like there isn't some other way to mix the numbers up and, and, and get 12 and no two of them, no two of them multiply to a perfect square. Hmm. This is a job for the monkeys. This is a job for the monkeys. All right, here we go. We're going to teach you something here. It's a very important principle in mathematics that I'm going to call the monkey barrel principle. I've got three monkey barrels here. Each one's a different color. Green, blue, red. And here's the problem. Can I pull out four monkeys, four monkeys total from these three barrels, and not get two monkeys of the same color? Let's see if we can do it. All right, here we go. Monkey number one, green. Monkey number two, blue. Monkey number three, red. Oh, wait, I need another monkey. Um, green, blue, red. No more colors, but... Oh. Well, I, I guess you figured it out. Now, there's no way for me to pull out four monkeys from these three barrels and not get two monkeys from the same barrel, you know, two monkeys that are the same color. And this is what I call the monkey barrel principle. It sounds ridiculous, sounds obvious, and yet, despite that, it's really, really powerful. Now, let's see how we can use the monkey barrel principle over here. First are barrels. Well, the first barrel all the squares. And all the squares are monkeys. And they're all in this one barrel of the squares. And the next barrel is double, it's numbers that are double squares. Next barrel is three times squares. And all these, each one of these is in its own barrel. So here I have 11 barrels. And the numbers are my monkeys. All right, these, these, these 16 monkeys. And I, and I know I have I'm going to have one monkey in each of these barrels, so I can draw one monkey from each. But there's no way, there's absolutely no way for me to draw 12 monkeys from these 11 barrels, take 12 numbers out of these columns, without grabbing two that come from the same column. And I know that whenever I grab two that are in the same column, those two multiply to a perfect square. And that, the monkey barrel principle, proves that it's impossible for Jillian to draw out 12 numbers without getting two whose product is a perfect square. So we see that we can definitely do 11, any one of these, any one of these, any one of these, and then all eight of these. That'll give us 11, and we see that it's impossible to get 12. So we know that the answer is 11. Now I have a little confession to make. It's not called the monkey barrel principle. Now, we don't call it the monkey barrel principle because, well, that's just a ridiculous name. I mean, monkey barrel principle, it just sounds silly. What it's really called is the pigeonhole principle, which sounds a l It doesn't sound a lot more sensible, does it? It sounds pretty ridiculous, too. I mean, the pigeonhole principle goes like this. If you have a whole bunch of pigeons, and you have a whole bunch of pigeonholes, and you're going to take the pigeons, and you're going to jam them into the pigeonholes. Jam them in, jam them in. If you have more pigeons than you have holes, then you're going to end up with at least one pigeonhole that has at least two pigeons. That's the pigeonhole principle. I'm not making it up. And you go look it up in a book, and you might be wondering, why would you use the monkey barrel principle? Pigeonhole principle is just as ridiculous. But see, the monkeys, they're nice and neat. They behave pretty well. See, here's what happens when I tried it with pigeons. See, I tried it with pigeons, and it looked kind of like this. <sighs> uh, uh. See, the pigeons make an awful mess when you try to jam them jam them in the holes because even pigeons don't like to be pigeonholed. <laughs>